Um, and and then we'll we'll try to explain this. But but Ayn Rand uh, Ayn Rand herself described Immanuel Kant, an author, just a writer who lived in a village, did nothing to anybody as far as we know. Was a was an uh, as far as we can tell uh, a a good teacher, a pleasant person. People like to have dinner parties with him and so on. As the most evil man in mankind's history, in terms of moral evaluation, more evil than Hitler, more evil, more evil than than Stalin, um, because she understood that you couldn't have a Hitler, you couldn't have a Stalin, without this writer, this philosopher Immanuel Kant, uh, preparing the culture, preparing the world for Hitler. Now. That does not, by any means, reduce Hitler's responsibility for accepting these ideas. Indeed, it doesn't eliminate the moral responsibility from anyone who accepted Kant's ideas. They are responsible for accepting these ideas and putting them into motion. But it recognizes the fact that this guy initiated the ideas. Now, you have to understand, in the case of Kant, in the case of Marx, in the case of Engels, these are smart people who understand what the ideas mean, understand what their implications are, are engaged in what Ayn Rand called the, the source of all evil, which is evasion. Evil is not about what you do to other people. It, for Ayn Rand, primarily evil is about the negation of your own mind. It's about the negation of reality. It's about evasion. It's about not dealing with the facts of reality. So if I see somebody like Kant who is evading, He's already evil. What raises him up to as evil as he is is the fact that not only is he evading reality, but he is perpetuating a systematic philosophy consciously and knowably that leads to nothing but destruction and death. And he does it because he's a genius on a scale and in, in, in a depth that can't be matched by any other thinker in human history. Um, and yes, the consequence of the, that, because all history is uh, driven by the fundamental cause, as Ayn Rand again identified, the fundamental cause of history is ideas. If you lead, if you, if you introduce ideas that are evil and you do so in a, in a way that's influential, in a way that's important, those ideas are going to have an impact in reality. And uh, that impact in the, in, the, in the case of Kant, in the case of Marx, is the death of hundreds of millions of people. And, and you, bear, you bear the moral responsibility, not the criminal responsibility. You can't take him to court. You can't shoot him. But you certainly can announce him to be an evil person and, and treat him accordingly. Uh, but yes, yeah, certainly Kant, Immanuel Kant, bears more responsibility than Hitler. Again, that doesn't absolve Hitler of anything. It just says that in order for Hitler to exist, there had to be a Kant. In order for Hitler to exist, there had to be a sequence of philosophers, of thinkers that made the culture possible. And to ignore that is to ignore history, to ignore ideas, and to make sure this happens again. Because it will happen again if we don't learn that ideas drive history, not individuals, not personalities, not collective BS anything. What drives history are the ideas people embrace and people learn. And that's why. What happens in our universities and what happens in our kindergartens and what happens in our schools is so fundamentally important. And if we teach evil ideas to our kids and the people and, and those kids, because of those ideas, ultimately embrace, uh, embrace a philosophy that allows them to just accept a Hitler, accept a Stalin, accept a whatever. And we suffer the consequences and we're going to say, you know, we don't know where this came from. You know, Hitler's a bad guy. What can we do? No, no. There are specific ideas that we have to avoid, that we have to condemn, that we have to fight against, that we have to declare as evil and the people who initiated them as evil. So, for example, Noam Chomsky today is an evil, bastard human being. And, and he is dis is despicable as a human being as, as some of these monsters in history. Now, that doesn't mean you put him in jail, but that means I certainly would never go up on stage with him. I would never cite him. I would never recommend that anybody read him. And I would, in every stage possible, I would declare him as an evil bastard because if we start taking people like Noam Chomsky seriously, if we start taking people like Immanuel Kant or, or Karl Marx seriously, then what we get are concentration camps. Then what we get are Pol Pot 
and, and the Khmer Rouge in Cambodia. And to avoid that, we have to fight against ideas because it's all about ideas.